Hi guys, it's Geraldine Ralph from Geraldine Ralph Studios. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I am gonna be talking about five things that you must have if you have a puppy in your home or your home daycare, if you have small children. If you don't know who I am, I have an early childhood program in my home where I care for six little people and one tiny Yorkie under the age of five. So I'm gonna go over five things that I think that you really need to have. Stella is my fifth dog, fifth dog, fourth dog, something like that. Um, she's my third Yorkie. Anyways, um, yeah, so I, I have like some pretty good strategies in place for working with Yorkies and making sure that I can have my tiny toy breed dog safe around the children and that we keep her from having accidents. If you know, little toy breeds are known for having a lot of accidents in the house and chewing things up and barking and doing lots of other crazy things. But it all, just like with children, it all starts out with how you raise them from puppyhood. So I'm gonna share the first thing that I have for you today, and that is Stella's crate. I think it's really important to crate train your dog. A few things about this crate that I really love. It is tiny, it's the perfect size for Stella. Um, she fits inside of there, this this crate, and I like the fact that it's metal, so she can see out of it. She's not like kind of closed in by herself. She can still, you know, see what's going on with everybody. Um, this crate has a bottom that is removable. Um, I haven't had any issues with Stella, like having really any accidents. She's had a couple little accidents when we first got her because her bladder is literally the size of a thimble. It was so tiny. Um, and she, she was like two pounds when I first got her. So now she's up to a whopping like four pounds. So she can hold it all through the night and everything. But when she was, a, when she was younger, she would have a harder time even knowing that she needed to go. So she didn't like whimper to go potty. So I would just have to be really diligent about getting her out. But anyways, the crate that I have here is an awesome crate. Let's see if it has a name. It says you and me. I think I paid like $40 for this crate and it has another piece that goes inside to make it even smaller. With a, um, with dogs, whenever you're crate training them or teaching them to go potty, you want the crate to not be any, to just be big enough for them to be able to turn around and lay down. Um, so that, that there was an insert. We didn't actually use the insert with this because like I said, I was pretty good about getting her out very very often like every hour and a half or something when we first got her and now we're up to like two hours two and a half hours during the day whenever she's out i just make sure that she goes potty but um yeah having a good crate is really important very important thing for you to have for your puppy also to keep your puppy safe and to give your puppy a safe space to go when the kids are getting kind of wound up or you can't attend to your puppy's needs the other thing that we have in here i love this i got this from amazon it's a sherpa lined puppy mat and it's very washable. It's nice because, like I said, when I first got her, she had a couple accidents. Now, I was going back and forth between getting the pee-pee pads or getting the washable pee-pee pads because I like to use sustainable items whenever I can in my early childhood program and in my home. Um, I bought all of the above. <laughs> I spent a lot of money on all that. And I wasn't able to return the pee-pee pads, which really bummed me out because I didn't end up using them. I just find, like, using PP pads uh, as, a, as a hindrance to actually getting my dogs trained. I don't, I, I don't know, I never use PP pads with any of my other dogs, but because she was so tiny and I was flying solo during the day, I was like, maybe we'll try the PP pads. Really, she just ended up, you know, chewing up the PP pads and going wherever she wanted to go if she wasn't put out in time. So I just decided to get rid of the PP pads. But anyways, I love the mat. I love this little $15 mat. I was thinking about getting another one. But um, she's been doing amazing with potty training, so I haven't needed to do that. So it's a really comfortable spot for her. I use this crate every time we travel. I don't like having my dogs just bouncing around inside the car. She's so little, she'll just go flying across the, the car if I have to put the brakes on. And it's very dangerous because they're very distracting, these cute little puppies. So that brings me to the next thing, the thing number two, item number two, that is really, really important to have if you have a puppy in your home, and that is a lot of these chew toys. So we have a variety of different chew toys for Stella. She's got the squeakers. She loves the squeakers. That makes her really happy. She's got her tug toys. Uh, I don't really let the kids play tug of war with her right now because she's in that puppy stage and she just grabs and grabs and grabs. She doesn't mean to get people's fingers, but she does. So I don't have the kids playing tug of war with her now. And when she gets a little bit older and she gets a little bit better at letting go, then we'll let her do that. But right now she loves, she heard me squeaking her toys and she's like, what's up, mama? Oh, what a girl. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think it's really important to teach your dog how to play fetch, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So with her, you notice I'm using two toys. Get it. Oh, 
Okay, go get it, good girl. So I used the first toy to show her the toy. Now see, she, she left the toy because I picked it up too quickly and got her interested in this toy. Go get it. Uh, but playing, teaching your dog how to play fetch, I have another toy here, is a great way, ah, what are you doing? For you to be able to keep them exercised and entertained so that, you know, you don't have a wild dog on your hand at the end of the day when you've been caring for the kids. As you can see, Stella absolutely loves her toys. Ow, hey. <laughs> but it's really important for puppies to have a variety of toys. For the first six months, they're gonna be chewing on everything. So if you don't have a lot of different kinds of toys for your puppy to chew on, they're gonna chew on the things in your home. And that's gonna be really expensive and frustrating. So this is these are Kong toys. Now these are great because you can stuff them with treats and you can see all the different textures here. So if you were cutting teeth and your little mouth hurt, you'd wanna be chewing on this. You can stuff like cheese in there. I got peanut butter in there. All kinds of fun things so she loves she loves these i have a couple of them sometimes at night whenever i'm watching tv i'll notice that she's trying to either get attention or she wants more stimulation so she'll start chewing on some of my things and then i will stuff one of these toys and put it inside of her playpen so the playpen is thing number three that we're going to be talking about today i am going to take you over here and show you what her playpen have looks a couple like of play pens. this is our indoor playpen I love this. They they didn't have these when I uh, had my other two Yorkies, or at least I wasn't aware of them. Hi, Amazon. I love you. So yeah, we got these from Amazon. They have all sorts of little, a uh, couple of doors around here. I don't uh, leave the doors open. I just put her in the playpen when I'm too busy to watch her, but I don't want to put her in her tiny crate just so that she has, you know, she has her toys and she has a little bit of room to move around. You can see she took a little nibble here. She's trying to figure out how to get out of there. Um, so we're either going to replace that. I'm either gonna end up replacing uh, this one later on down the road or we'll fix it. I don't know, I think it was like $40, but totally, totally, totally worth the investment. This playpen has a mesh top, zips. This mesh top just zips on the top there, which is a really good thing because Stella is a tiny dog. <laughs> she says, give me that mesh. I want to rip it up. Um, she's tiny, and so if she is outside, I want her to be safe from predators. Also, you know, if I happen to have her in the daycare room and I don't want to have to worry about kids dropping things on her or trying to, you know, get in there with her, we can put a lid on the top of there just to keep her safe, but then she can still be a part of everything. Also, a little word on that. I don't let my kids and my dog play together without direct adult supervision, and I keep everything very short with her because she's tiny and she's very easy to squish. So <laughs> I don't want any of the kids to accidentally squish her, um, but I do want her to be socialized with children. So I do let her be around the kids every now and then. So, and during, right now, this is the weekend. So obviously we have no kids here. This playpen is set up um, for her, you know, just to play in the regular, you know, living space. I don't take it into the daycare space, but you could, I don't know, maybe at some point later on down the road, I will, but right now I don't. Anyway, so I have an outdoor playpen for her as well, and this has been very helpful for potty training. yard looks like a flaming hot mess right now. <laughs> we have mud, so we had to build this little track system to get out to the garage. Or I mean, I'm sorry, out to her little, we call it the pee-pee pen. And um, this is just makeshift. We're going to build her a run with a little roof on it because again, she's a Yorkie. We live, you know, we're out in the country on the weekends, so... Um, I don't want her to get scooped up by a hawk, so we have to have this cover over her for right now. Plus, of course, with the you know rain and all that yucky stuff, it just it just keeps everything from getting really gross inside of her crate. Uh, that's the nice thing about those little play pens is that you can add a couple of them together. So this upcoming spring, Joka is going to make a play pen for her so that she has a space to play. Ow! <laughs> she went to grab my toe. <laughs> so that she will have a space to play in. All right, if you're going to be naughty, I'm going to put you back in your playpen. She's grabbing my toes because I'm not paying attention to her. Anyways, um, yeah, we could, we're going to put a, we're going to build a more permanent situation. This is just totally temporary because, you know, whatever. We got her during the winter time and the weather kind of sucks right now and it's too muddy and gross and cold to be outside building doggy toy run or doggy runs. But anyways, that is a great thing to have. Whatever size your pet, you, those play pens are available. And I think I spent like $30 on that play pen. I'll get, um, get a picture of that and post it here for you guys so you can see it. It's about $30 and you can um, add them together and make them larger to whatever the size of your pet is. 
So let's see, where are we at? So we did the crate, we did the toys, we did the indoor playpen and the outdoor playpen. Uh, the next thing we're gonna talk about, if you have a tiny puppy, it is super helpful to have a little, <laughs> a little bell on her collar because uh, and when you get new puppy, when you get new puppies, you have to watch them all the time. Otherwise, they will destroy everything and hide and not come back and all that fun stuff. So, having a bell on her just helps her stay out from under our feet and helps us be aware of where she's at when she's out playing. Um, and we got her this great harness from Sadie Lady the Stitch, Sadie, Sadie Lady Stitching. So this is really great. Um, I went with the unicorn and rainbow pattern because my little girls are gonna love that. But you can see here, it's a nice high quality harness for her. And it's got a little skirt on it. It's got the little clip on the back here. Now with Yorkies or small puppies, any kind of small breed, you definitely don't wanna just use like a regular collar because they pull and they bark a lot. And if they pull, they could collapse their own trachea. So, so it is really important to use something like this. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed our video today. And if you have a little one, a little puppy that's gonna be joining your early childhood program and you have any questions, I would be happy to help you with that. Um, and if there's anything I left out, please be sure to leave some information down in the comments. Thanks for stopping by. And if there's anything else that you would like to see on my channel, let me know. I hope you have a fabulous day. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the alerts so that you get notification of our upcoming videos. Bye. Have an awesome day.